we are back with another reaction video i am your host dave a 10-year intellectual property attorney dealing with everything from copyrights to patents trade secrets trademarks if it's dealing with intellectual property i am involved in some form or fashion so for those of you who have been li living under a rock over the past week nike had just recently sued a social media influencer i should call he's more than an influencer a business owner an entrepreneur the shoe surgeon for 60 million dollars this is actually a a pretty interesting suit i'll show you the article and we will get through this article but i i do want to just to uh kind of put things in context uh for those for those of you who are like me who i mean who the heck is this shoe surgeon guy this is actually a pretty uh you know big guy this guy has a large influence a large following if you see here this is his ig page the guy has 1.1 million followers so again and you see here you have gucci you have lebron james and uh so i mean he has some it seems, i think this is him right here this is a picture of him seems like he has these uh jordan ones the wu-tang edition uh let's see here as we scroll down his uh it's actually funny i actually was looking at this one earlier today i mean people are petty if you go down here let's see here let's see here uh he's kind of again you know, making a post about the wu-tang here uh uh Jordan ones and you would you have this person K Kalisha because I'm not sure how you pronounce that name but all the best with the new with the new lawsuit so again this is three days ago obviously this post was after the Nike lawsuit and uh people are already trolling them uh but yeah I mean again this is uh, apparently this guy uh makes uh, customized shoes makes one of ones uh he shows people which it seems like that's a part which we'll get off into the article how to uh Kind of create their own shoe from scratch which i think is pretty cool uh and again as you can see here uh you know some pretty customizable shoes some pretty dope shoes if i do say so myself and uh, i think back of uh you know especially in the nfl being a big football guy when it's like one week of the nfl where you have these uh, nfl allows for the the players to get customized uh cleats and it seems like he does a lot of those one-on-ones those customized shoes and interestingly enough he actually has a relationship with Nike. It's not like this guy just came out of nowhere, especially with 1.1 million dollars, 1.1 million followers on IG. It's not like this guy came out of nowhere. He actually has a relationship with Nike where they actually contracted uh him to you know create some of these one-on-one -on -one shoes, whether it's with an athlete or a special release. I think I was kind of reading something the other day where LeBron James had scored 30,000 or was in a process of uh getting 30,000 points. They had contracted with the surgeon, the shoe surgeon to create this one of one uh, shoe as a gift for LeBron. So Nike has a relationship with this guy, a working relationship, I should say, where they have essentially hired this guy to do some things. But however, on the flip side of things, uh, it seems like he has uh, kind of went above what they have allowed as relates to him uh, using the intellectual property of Nike, trademarks and uh, things of that sort, uh, using it beyond the scope of uh you know the working relationship and it, it's kind of got him in some trouble here and i actually do these lives every sunday at 7 p.m eastern standard time we actually go through the law so we break it down we pull up uh you know different things so I, i'm planning on maybe not doing it this sunday but the following sunday actually going through the complaint it's a 63 page complaint so it's a lot of stuff in there and you might imagine if these guys have a kind of business relationship that went sour i'm, I'm sure it'd be a lot of an uh, juicy details in there so be on the lookout for that but for now we're just going to uh look at this complex article read this complex article kind of see what's going on here i'll give you my thoughts as an intellectual property attorney and then I, I would like to hear from you guys so in the comment section please leave your comments uh not only now but at the end of the video after we kind of go through things let me know what you guys think about it is the shoe surgeon wrong is nike wrong do you think this relationship can be mended or do you think this is forever fractured given the fact that nike has sued this guy for 60 million dollars uh, so you guys have to let me know that in the comment section another thing that i, I was on a, actually a call with a client the other day and uh this had came up but nike has a multi-billion dollar intellectual property budget so as it relates to obtaining intellectual property whether it's copyrights patents a trademarks or defending their intellectual property you know sending cease and desist letters suing people 
they have a multi-billion dollar with the b billion dollar ip budget feel like those guys are killing it over there in uh, oregon so before you know you think that you're going to be able to get pull a fast one on nike or uh you know make a quick buck on nike and they're it's not going to come across their radar and to the extent that it does they're not going to do anything about it you have another thing coming they're they probably filed dozens of lawsuits uh every year just for you know people who tried to you know take their intellectual property and they have the budget to do it so again before you guys think you guys are going to get one on, over on nike uh just be aware of that but that's enough of me Let, let's get to this lawsuit here so nike is suing the shoe surgeon for 60 million dollars and again nike is accusing uh the customizer of unapproved use of his trademarks and counterfeiting its designs so shout out to complex complex for this article uh I'm not going to go over that. Less than a month after being hit with the lawsuit from Goyard. So you guys have to let me know who Goyard is. I'm not sure who Goyard is, but it seems like the shoe surgeon, it hasn't been a good month. Just put it like that, or a good couple months. Seems like he was hit with the lawsuit from Goyard a month ago, and now he's hit with the $60 million lawsuit from Nike. So it hasn't been a good couple months from uh, for, for the shoe surgeon, to say the least. Over the alleged misuse of a luxury leather brand signature canvas material so it seems like he was hit with the lawsuit from goyard over uh some some luxury materials uh, the customizer's real name is dominic aka the shoe surgeon is now facing legal action from nike which is accusing him of using his trademark without authorization news of nike's litigation against the shoe surgeon was first reported by sneaker legal shout out to sneaker legal on ig nike filed a lawsuit against the shoe surgeon in the southern district of new york on monday and the complaint the brand accuses the shoe surgeons' businesses of using Nike's trademarks, counterfeiting and unauthorized wholesale uh, usurpation of Nike's brand. Nike said the shoe surgeon work is misleading to consumers who might wrongfully believe his designs are, deli- are legitimate Nike collaborations. So it seems like the whole point of, and if you are a, a fan of the channel, you have heard me say this multiple times, but for those of you who may be new tuning in to the first time, the whole point of trademark is for the consumer to be able to identify the owner of the goods and services. So when you go pick up a shoe and it has that trademark Nike swoosh or it has the word Nike, you're like, okay, this is coming from the real Nike uh, out in Oregon, Nike Incorporation. And to the extent that you get it and it's fake or it's not what you come to be, uh, then you because you would be pissed off you're like man i paid a hundred dollars or whatever to go on rate is for a shoe these days uh, that nike sells and you're picking up this shoe and you're like hold on man i paid the real thing and this is the you no know, this is not the real thing you would be pretty pissed off so actually trademark law protects you as a consumer because it wants you when you see that trademark brand to uh be able to identify the real the real owner with the goods or services that you're you know picking up from the trademark brand so that's the whole part of a trademark law to identify the uh, owner of the goods and services based on their brand, the logo or a word mark. Let's get back to a uh, article here. So it seems like, again, like I said earlier, the shoe surgeon had a previous relationship with Nike where they approved some of his, uh, his, you know, his, his work, some of the silhouettes name in the file, including, hold on, let did we, did we skip some. Okay, so some okay, so it seems like some of the silhouettes name in the file and the filing include Nike Air Force One. So it seems like he's taking the Air Force One, the Jordan ones, the Jordan threes, and the Jordan four. So a lot of Air, the Air Force Ones and a lot of Jordans seems like he's using without permission. As detailed here, and this seems like this is a quote from maybe the, the lawsuit. As detailed here, in this is not a case concerning only, only the shoe surgeon's large scale infringement of Nike's rights through his shoe surgeon customization business. So again, he Shows people how to customize shoes, how to build their shoes. The lawsuit reads, rather, Nike seeks to enjoin the shoe surgeon and the other defendants in their attempts to build an entire multifaceted retail empire through their unauthorized use of Nike's trademarks, rights, and the associated goodwill that Nike spent decades. So it seems like for me, and again, you guys have to let me know, especially if you took his course, let me know if you took his class or his course, you have you know, bought shoes from him or built shoes using him. You have to let me know what you guys think in the comment section. But when I read that, paragraph it lets me it, it leaves me to believe that he's teaching people through his school how to build nikes and build jordans and if people can build their own nikes or build their own jordans then they won't need to buy them from nike uh, anymore so it seems like that's what the lawsuit is saying is like hey man this goes way we're going to get him because he's 
one of the main guys, but this goes way beyond him. It seems like they have sued other defendants where it's like, no, wh whoever's you know, providing the material, who I, obviously he's you know, the shoe surgeon is showing these people, but then you have other consumers that are actually building the shoes as well, and they're building Jordans, they're building Air Force Ones, and as a result of them kind of doing this on themselves, they won't necessarily need to go buy it from Nike anymore. So this exact, this essentially what this paragraph is saying is like, hey man, this is this is not just him. It's other defendants in their attempts to build an entire multifaceted retail empire. So man, that, that's a strong claim there through their unauthorized use of Nike's trademarks. And again, they they you know, essentially have a right because if they're using that Nike swoosh, they're using that Jordan logo, they're using a the word Jordan, if they're using a the word Nike to build these shoes, then that's trademark infringement because you're using a you know a trademark logo or name that you have unauthorized use. You have to get permission from the trademark owner, in this case, Nike, to be able to use it. So, again, they it seems like they have, based on what we know now, it seems like they definitely have a claim here. Let's continue reading. In the filing, Nike says that, let me see, are these in the case consignment? Okay, here we go. Nike said that they had attempted on essentially uh, on multiple cases to resolve the alleged violations outside of the courtroom. Several times the complaint says the infringing products were removed from the shoe surgeon website but returned to a later date. This is always a big key for me as I'm looking at this as an IP attorney. If you are removing a product, it just doesn't look good. I'm not saying that you're guilty I'm not or liable. I'm not saying that you're not liable, but when you remove products, when somebody is sending you a cease and desist letter or kind of come knocking at your door, then you look to put them up later. It just doesn't look good. Again, and for those of you who have watched these lives that I do when we break down the lawsuits, you get that a lot where when that when that defendant gets that initial uh, lawsuit or cease to desist letter, they actually take down the stuff. But then a lot of times they put them up later. And to the extent that you do that, it just doesn't look good. So uh seems like that's what happened here on multiple occasions. But it says uh, you know, the suit surgeon in this company did not respond to a request for a comment on the lawsuit. So it seems like a, a complex uh, reached out to the shoe surgeon in this company and they didn't respond. The Nike complaint mentions. The Shoe Surgeon Academy, which seems like that's the, his academy, which I, I actually think is an interesting uh, concept, teaching people how to build their shoes, which he's called the Shoe Surgeon. Obviously, he has a big following with a million followers. So, which is a physically brick and mortar. So, it's a brick and mortar operation that teaches individuals how to create custom Nike branded shoes from scratch. Again, the problem is if you're teaching people how to create custom shoes from scratch, that's not a big issue. If you're teaching people how to create custom Nike Shoes from scratch, using a Nike logo, using the Nike trade dresses, particularly on the Air Force One and on the Jordans. That's a big issue. So, again, you guys have to let me know in the comment section. Has anyone been to this Shoe Surgeon Academy? Again, is he doing this? Yes or no? I, I would like to love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Uh, and filing the brand includes multiple examples of the Shoe Surgeon trademark infringing products, including unauthorized versions of the coveted Dior and Jordan 1 and the Tiffany uh, Tiffany and Company Air Force One below. So, I mean, actually, this is a pretty dope shoe, I would say. But again, if you're using that Nike trademark, and again, Nike not only has a trademark on the swoosh, but they also have the trademark on the actual trade dress, the, the look, the overall appearance of the actual Jordan 1. So, it seems like Dior is going to be calling them next because uh, if he's using a Dior trademark without uh, authorization or permission, they, they may be the ones... Uh, Okay, it seems like this is Nike Air Jordan. So this is actually Nike's, and this is uh the shoe surgeon infringing new shoe. So he's using just a swoosh. I'm not sure. It's hard for me to tell. I, yeah, I'm not sure what's on a, on the sole of the shoe or the bottom of the shoe. I'm not sure if that's the, the Jordan logo or if that's another logo. But, okay, the shoe to the left is the Dior-Nike collaboration and uh, an official collaboration, what it says. But, yeah, if, if, again, if you're using that Nike trademark and it's unauthorized, then uh, hey, you're, you're going to be liable for trademark infringement. Uh, so let's keep continue reading. There's only a little bit left. Nike is seeking compensation for the damages related to over 30 Nike trademarks. Again, and Nike have Nike has a ton of trademarks. It, it's saying, saying here that he has infringed over 30 Nike trademarks, totaling 60 million dollars. And I think that's statutory. So that's what he, that's what Nike can uh, request based on the statutory amount or which you typically see in lawsuits or the profit that the defendant generated from the counterfeiting, traveling along with attorney fees. So, you know, when you talk about treble damages, you're talking about three times the amount of damages. So, you know, the court can award Nike the profits that the defendant has generated, and they but they can treble with the damages because it was willful infringement and it can get his attorney fee. So even if they don't get the $60 million, this guy can be uh, on a hook for a ton of money. 
So in a conversation with Complex, uh, Nike stressed that it tried to resolve its issue with the shoe surgeon outside of the courtroom. Nike issues stem from stem from Nike issues stem from not from. Yeah, that's that's a weird sentence. Nike issues stem. I think this is extra from not from the shoe surgeons one off customs, but rather it's large scale production of sneakers based on Nike's. The brand says shoe surgeon ramped up his operations after failing to come to an agreement with Nike. So it seems like, hey, like I said before, he's doing some one off customizations with Nike, which they're approving. No issues with that. However, it seems like they were Nike and the shoe surgeon was, were in some negotiations, maybe with uh, the shoe surgeon being able to teach people how to create Nike's and Nike probably wasn't okay with that so the talk broke down and he continued to did it anyway and even ramped up that's that's what it looks like happened based on reading that paragraph again let me know if somebody took or is in a shoe academy <laughs> is he teaching people how to uh create nikes or uh manufacture nikes or you know form nikes that that's this is interesting reach for reach for nike reach for common nike provided complex with a long statement on the lawsuit it appears for law i ain't gonna get off into that but what do you guys think, man? So, I mean, I'll definitely, like I said, in a couple of weeks, I'll try to kind of read through the complaint and kind of get my thoughts. I'll do that live so you guys can kind of, you know, chime in in a uh, chat and kind of give me your, 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 essentially your thoughts live. But, I mean, I think the shoe surgeon, again, if you're teaching people how to create Nikes using a Nike trademark with the swoosh and the Jordan and the Jordan word Jordan, the, the, the Jumpman logo, the actual, uh, the word Nike, and, and again, they have a trade dress on these Air Force Ones, on these Jordan Ones, on multiple different silhouettes. So it's not looking good from the shoe surgeon based on what I'm reading. But what we all know is two sides every story. And uh, I'd be interested in, in getting the shoe surgeon's uh, side of things. But again, let me know. Do you think that if you get sued for $60 million, can you at some point uh, amend or make amends with that person or is a relationship forever fractured because again as we just saw they had a working relationship up until this point in time and then it seems like he tried to you know show people how to create these nikes and nike just wasn't having it and bam there goes the suit so let me know i think that uh it'll get interesting i think it's two sides to every story uh, but again at the end of the day trademark i love trademarks because compared to patents compared to some other forms of copyright it's a lot more cut and dry if you're using the exact same logo or mark or whatever the case may be on a product then it's pretty much trademark infringement. Uh, we all, and again, the whole thing is likelihood of confusion. So if you were selling a shoe, for example, and let's get back to the article here. If you were selling this shoe, if, if, if the shoe surgeon is selling this shoe, would you think that it's coming from Nike or do you think it's a Nike approved shoe? If the answer is yes, then there's a likelihood of confusion and therefore trademark infringement. If you're looking at this shoe, you buy this shoe from the shoe surgeon, and you're like, man, you know what? Nike is uh this this is so different from Nike and I'm not going to be confused that this is actually a Nike shoe then it's not trademark infringement but again if he's selling this shoe to the right I mean it looks pretty similar to the shoe to the left which is a Nike uh, uh official Nike shoe so just from that alone that analysis alone is not looking good but man we'll see what happens a lot of times this stuff settled before it actually makes it to to trial and and, and be is decided on by a judge or a jury uh, but again, who knows? Anything can happen. Let me know again in the comment section. If you like this type of content, please, please, please not only hit the like button, but also subscribe to the video. I'm trying to give you guys not just a little bit of entertainment, but I'm trying to educate you guys on intellectual property law. And hopefully with the hopes that you go up, start your business and kind of create a product and protect the intellectual property. You monetize up, monetize uh, off of it and to the extent that somebody infringes your trademark, your copyright or any other form of intellectual property you have you know what your uh your remedies are and uh you know you kind of look at them and and uh and and go for it appropriately so until next time i will see you guys again take care peace